obviously, road has been a difficult place for you guys this year. What what has been the difference in your mind? Like what you said, you know, coming into this game, guys were ready, they're ready to go. What's maybe the difference going into those games? You know, um, we're one and three on the road. Certainly, zero oh and three, in, right? Zero oh and three in league. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I, you know, we just haven't been as disciplined as we need. I, I don't feel like we had the edge that we need. I do think the last game we were just a little bit, you know, with Lawson getting hurt three minutes into the game, and we found out that, you know, that morning um, after pregame that. Uh, Raleigh wasn't going to play, although we were kind of prepared because that could happen. Um, but we just got to be better. You got to—I know I said this post game—you got to eliminate losing to win. Got to take—you don't have to play perfect, but you—we do got to be tighter with all of our stuff. We got to rebound. We got to play with more phys physicality. Got to be on edge more. Got to handle the crowd more. Got to take care of the ball more. Got to make our free throws. So I feel like it's been a little bit different for each one. Although the Arizona State Arizona trip, I felt like. Um, we really got exposed in transition defense. I feel like we've gotten a lot better in that area um, since then. We just gave them points in that area and with turnovers. Both those teams, we turned it over and just led to direct points. So, um, but we have to play better. There's no doubt about it. Um, and uh, we got to be able to make some some improvements that way and just tighten things up. Well, first of all, I got to apologize because I said after the game yesterday it was game 20 and it was game 19, uh, as my wife did tell me when I got home. Um, but uh, it is, it's kind of crazy that, you know, I was just looking at these are our last two games in January. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Um, uh, and so then after this weekend, we're at the halfway point. So, you know, you, you just got to watch. You know, I watched. Um, uh, one game of Washington State and a heavy dose of Washington, or excuse me, one game of Washington and a heavy dose of Washington State. And teams play a little bit different as you go on. And it's already been almost a month since we played these guys. And and some guys' minutes are up, some guys' minutes are down. I'm sure when you watch us, we look, I mean, in fact, I know, because uh, I watched our game against Washington State this morning, we look a lot different than we did a month ago. It, it just in how we're playing and who we're playing. And so got to be able to adjust accordingly but at the end of the day their I think their their DNA is the same so to speak and in particular you know when you play Washington State I, I say this every year but it's true uh, it's like a root canal it's like you're going to the dentist and they're they're prying in there and they're digging in there and they probably feel the same and every time it feels like when we play it's just this kind of an ugly tug of war um, type of basketball so um, the good news for our guys, I think things go a little bit quicker the second time around. We have a, a real genuine feel for their personnel, their scheme, what we try to do. Our guys know the strength of, you know, and what these guys play like and how strong they are. Because I think the first time you play somebody, there's always that, you know, five to eight minute stretch where it's like a boxing match where you're trying to kind of feel each other out. Well, we've already kind of, we've been down that road already. So there's just so much more familiarity um, playing them the second time, and um, and obviously now you get to this point, and of course every game matters, but it, I feel like it matters even that much more when you look at the standings, how everything is just so jumbled up uh, in the Pac-12. I don't know if parity is the right word, but do you feel it's kind of that way this year with, with the Pac-12? There's not, I mean, the last couple of years you've had, you know, at least one or two teams that right. have dominated. Yeah. Do you feel like it's a little bit more that way where it's any given night type thing? Yeah, I think the strength of the league is showing itself. You know, obviously the last two years, UCLA and Arizona have been ranked, and USC's been in there uh, most of the time as well. So this right now, for whatever reason, we have one team ranked, but I, there's no question, and we've said this from day one, the depth of this league is way, way, way better than it has been my first two years where you just, you know, Expect the unexpected, right? And nothing is really super surprising this year, it feels like. And it seems like when you look at the scores, there's a lot of close games um, throughout the league, regardless of who's playing at home or who's on the road. And I know it's the old cliche, you got to take care of business at home and find a way to get splits on the road. And if you can somehow win two, you are like really jumping the competition. Last year, I mean, you had Raleigh and, and Gabe go out for some extended time. Obviously, your, your league play changed as a result of that. What What's maybe different this year that's allowed you to be a little bit better, at least early on, to be able to mitigate some of that? Well, way more depth. I mean, 
No, no question. And we and we're, our depth has been really, really tested now. I mean, you know, at the very beginning of the year, we had a guy that ended up, you know, not being able to be here. Uh, obviously, Will being out. Uh, and, and it's easy to forget about that one. Like, we had big expectations for him this year. Um, and I think he would have delivered. Um, and then now, of course, with Raleigh being out and Lawson, I mean, those are four good players, right? And so... Uh, it's getting really, really tested right now, and I'm really proud. You know, obviously the easy guy to talk about with our bench. Um, you know, Ben Ben played outstanding. Um, veteran guy starts every game a year ago. Great synergy with BC specifically. Those two guys playing together, they did it so much. I mean, they did it all year last year. And Ben's the only guy that started every game last year for us. So, uh, and then we just, you know, on any given night, it could just depend on. You know, we we, we still need more out of those guys. I thought Luca gave us really good minutes the other night. And it doesn't just show up crazy in a box sheet, but I thought he guarded well. Uh, he did his assignments well, right? Uh, we'd like to mitigate the turnovers, and he had two turnovers, but that was a source of an that was an issue with our whole team uh, against Oregon. And uh, uh, and then Hunter was just very very solid, and then, you know Jaden played a couple. But those guys are in a tough spot now. They're they're going to be playing, but it might be twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, and it might be ten or seven. So you just got to be ready. Uh, when their numbers called to be ready to roll, and then, and then we got to work hard to stay out of foul trouble, right? You got to compete and be physical and all that stuff. That was it put us in some tough spots there when Cabo got in some foul trouble, um, and we had to overextend some guys. I know one of our assistants like, man, BC looks dead out there. And I'm like, yeah, he played the whole first. I mean, essentially, he played the whole first. I think he probably played 17 minutes, but, um, um, but I think no doubt the depth, and then I think you add that. Maybe not quite as equally, but just we have a lot more experience on this team, right? We're just not playing. I mean, we have a lot more guys that I think kind of understand how to play heavier minutes because they are older. They learn to find their spots. I'd like them to find their spots and rest a little more on offense and not so much on defense. Um, and we'll address that. But but I do think having that experience and been through the league with a lot of these guys uh, makes a big, big difference. Well, I think it's a combination of two things. One, I mean, he's just playing, and we played almost 38 minutes the other night. But I, but I think also it's just, um, you know, the more games he gets under his belt, like our our team is almost two thirds of the way through. But in a lot of ways, he's only a third of the way through. And I think you can really see it and feel it the last three games, where he's really um, kind of figured out, gotten a rhythm, basketball's rhythm and timing. I think his his synergy with our team has gotten to you know, a lot higher level. We as coaches um, getting a real feel for his game, if that makes sense, and putting him in better position to succeed on both sides of the ball. Can he guard these guys? Can he not? Who can he have success with? Who does he struggle with? Where do we put him in a position of success? Obviously, we've added some new things because we are a different team um, without Lawson and without Raleigh. So, but man, he's been he's been playing outstanding. He's really accepted the challenge uh, he wants to be coached. He's embraced it, um, and he's playing in attack mode, right? He's he's playing aggressive. I mean, he had some plays in that first half, well, the whole game the other night. But I mean, where you could you, you could hear our fans just like, you know, with the, his speed. Um, I mean, he's a dynamic player, and I uh, think you know when you guys came to um, the practice, I remember we had that practice. I remember specifically that day. He had a really good practice that day, and, and you could tell from then, you know, um, that he was going to bring some different things to our to our team um, that we need. Where, where does he have to take it maybe to the next step that you want to see? That's the exciting part. I think he's really good right now, but I think he there's I just I really believe there's a whole different level that he can get to um, as he figures everything out. I still think he's I don't want to say overthinking, but there's certain things. Um, just with certain schematic things that we do on both sides where um, it's not like we always tell our guys, the best way to learn is to overlearn, right? So whether you're studying for a test, you're learning how to do it where you don't have to think about it. It's just, you just know it. And so, you know, I, I, we've kind of taken a step backwards plus with some of the other guys that we're playing to simplify our playbook, right? And, and make sure we're really on point with our scheme because it has to be executable. So, just getting on point with that, because 
we're doing some different things now, even with like Lawson being out um, that we that we haven't had to do in the past. And so uh, getting everybody on board, but him specifically. Um, and then I just think um, just making the right reads, making the right progressions, whether it's an out of bounds play or a set call, you know what I mean? And I think that's, it's not that he doesn't know how to do it. It's just understanding our terminology to a T, what play we're running to the T, what this progression, then that progression, and then that's the third progression, that kind of thing. And I'm going to say this for every guy. Everybody's got to get better on the defensive end. You know what I mean? You just got to constantly, and when you're playing 37, 38 minutes, that's a big load, right? You got to be able to do it all uh, on both sides of the ball.